I'm Jennifer Sinesi, you're watching News 24 Live. I'm joined in studio by my co-host, Jerusha Sukhthiorath. And as always, we're going to talk you through the top search terms on Google in South Africa this week. Hello. Hello, Jen. It's an extra long weekend. It's Fake Friday today. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yes. It's going to be really horrible next week, though, when we have um, a full week of work. I can't even remember what it's like to work five days. I'm kidding. We work all the time. <laughs> we anyway. Do. All right, so let's start, touch on these news topics first so we can go out with, with a little bit of a, a lighter feel into this long weekend. Good idea. Hectic week in news. Again, um, Nepal, there was that deadly earthquake, 7.8 magnitude earthquake. Why don't you talk us through what happened? Well, it's now confirmed that we know that 5,500 people have died. It's wow. catastrophic. And also, we know that there are South Africans trapped in Nepal. Um, News 24 reporter Jeff Wicks is on a plane as we speak on the way to Nepal, so he's going to be crossing back and forth with us. And the real struggle at the moment is to get to the people and the bodies. Um, many people migrate or are migrant workers from their villages to Kathmandu, the capital, and now the government's giving them free transport to go back home to their villages to try and see if their family are still alive. And I just think that must be the most devastating thing. Of course, all our love and thoughts and prayers from News 24's team goes to the people of Nepal. Exactly. Our prayers definitely go out to the friends and family of the victims mm -hmm. and the rescue workers that yeah. are working tirelessly day and night. Now, next, Baltimore. Riots in Baltimore. Again, it seems like the United States have had this ongoing discussion and discourse um, when, when it comes to race issues yeah. in the States lately. Why don't you talk us through what's going on over there? Right, so we've seen the Black Lives Matter um, topic really, really coming to a boil in the US. And it all involves young black men who've died after altercations with police. Which seems to be happening, maybe it's just getting reported on more, but more and more we're hearing stories like this coming out of the United States. Absolutely. There was Trayvon Martin, there was the young man who had an asthma attack after being hold, held in an illegal chokehold, and now we have Freddie um, Gray. He was 25 years old and he died after an altercation with a police officer. It's all very suspicious and we don't really know what happened, but we know that Baltimore has just lit up in riots, um, people taking to the streets, throwing trash around, um, you know, messing with infrastructure, all in protest mm -hmm. of, of what's been happening. And really, I, I know that there's been a lot of comment about it not being the right way to do things, but I think we need to understand these people's pain and also realize that this is a community that feels marginalized, the community really feels as though they've been targeted by police and this is their way of expressing that. And of course they don't feel like they're being heard. Mm. Now, have the police come out and said anything regarding this incident? Not yet, but we are keeping an eye on the situation and we will know soon. All right. Now we were speaking about the many holidays we've been having lately and Freedom Day was on Monday. We all had the day off on Monday. So that was something that a lot of South Africans were trending. I actually was listening to the radio and they were asking South Africans to call in and tell them whether they knew why we were celebrating Freedom Day. And let me tell you, two out of three people didn't know. What? How <laughs> okay, how old were they, first of all? Do you remember? They didn't, they didn't say, but they weren't young people. They weren't born freeze. Let's That's put it that way. upsetting. Isn't that upsetting? Very put upsetting. Put it on the record, Drew. Shall tell all the South Africans who are watching this video, if they don't know yet, what Freedom Day celebrates. Freedom Day celebrates the 21 years since we voted to become a democratic country. My favorite thing about it, Jen, was um, hearing everybody's stories about what they were doing on Freedom Day. And my brother's born free. He was born in 94. And on Freedom Day, my mother was massively pregnant with him and had to shuffle along a really long queue to vote. My dad says after his whole life of not being allowed to vote, he was so excited to stand in a queue with his brothers and sisters and vote. And my mom was such a grumpy pregnant woman. She got, <laughs> them, she got them moved to the front of the queue so he didn't get to queue with everyone and sing and dance. It was hot, it was Durban, she wanted to get out of there. But at least she got, they got to the front. They did. Hey? <laughs> And it's just been incredible to hear people's stories. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I look at our colleagues and our lives and realize that um, had we not voted on that day, none of this would have been possible. But of course, you know, it took a bit of a sour turn because President Jacob Zuma didn't address and many people feel that he didn't tackle the xenophobic violence yeah. in, in a hands-on way. 
In fact, he said that the rest of Africa must also take responsibility. And we were waiting for decisive leadership, a decisive response from our president. And I don't believe we got that. You know, we've been waiting for that since the xenophobia attacks have happened. And it seems like he's skirting around the issue, using it to skirt around other issues. So, so well put. Yes. yes. <laughs> so we'll see what happens next. Mm. Now, moving on to entertainment, Bruce Jenner was actually the number one search term I in Google imagine. this week. Of course, he did that two hour long special with Diane Sawyer about his gender transformation. He has confirmed that he has started uh, the process to, to becoming a woman. So, I, you know, uh, there was a lot of speculation before the interview happened about whether it was going to be sensationalized and whether it was going to have the Kardashian effect. and. A lot of media reports, myself included, um, everyone is saying it was just the right thing to do. The interview was handled really well. It was an amazing step in the right direction for transgender communities. Did you see it? I saw bits and pieces of it. Mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure where I can watch the whole thing, but I'm very excited to. I was really disappointed at some of the tweets that came through, yeah. uh, notably from his ex son-in-law, uh, Chris Humphreys. I couldn't believe it. What an idiot. What did he say? It was something so insensitive. He's, it was something along the lines of, glad I got out of that family when I did. Something along those lines. That was the message he was, he was putting out there. And I just think he's an idiot. Yeah. He's just dumb. And we can't... Well, we can blame him for that. Totally. He did retract it soon after. Oh, come on. It's so easy to retract something when exactly. everybody is, is down your throat about it. So, Jen, moving forward, um, mm -hmm. this obviously will now set the precedent for how we cover things. And I know that Channel 24 has, has really been doing a beautiful job of it, yeah. deciding to call Bruce she and using um, female pronouns for her because that's, of mm -hmm. course, how Bruce wants to identify herself. It's something that South Africans need to wrap our minds around, but it's good. It's progress. It really is. It, you know, it gets the conversation going. And I think we still have a long way to come from here, but it will be interesting. And I'm excited to see the docuseries. Mm. And, um, there's a docuseries coming out that's going to document Bruce's transformation. And it's set to tackle real issues, but it's also funny. Um, I, I heard he, we're going to see him learn how to golf with a pair of breasts. <laughs> So he ha he'll have to change his golf game, I guess. Yeah. So it's going to be great because, you know, life shouldn't be taken too seriously. And it's, it's him and he can laugh about it. So, so Before we on. move on, though, has Bruce um, given an indication of um, what he'll now be called? Because, of course, he won't go as Bruce Jenner anymore. Ha do we know? He did say that there is a name that he likes to be called, but he doesn't want to reveal it because he doesn't want the media to to put a negative spin on it. So he hasn't revealed what his name is, whether that's going to come out in the future, I'm not sure. That's fair enough, actually. Yeah. yeah. Mother's Day is on the 10th. No. Is that this weekend? I no. No, it's no, next weekend. No, it's next weekend. Jeez. <laughs> I don't know if we're allowed to say this on camera, but we both have kind of crazy moms. No, no, totally crazy moms we have. And yours only likes diamonds, I just learned. Yes, so I'm a bit nervous about what to get her. And yours is also really fussy. So And you... she's in Canada. And everything <laughs> I give her, or everything I send her, anything I give her, she says, oh, I could have made this. Well, diamonds, she couldn't go and mine for them. So maybe I that's... wouldn't put a past down others. <laughs> So you haven't decided what you're going to get your mom. I'm borderline terrified. <laughs> okay. Well, you still have a week. I almost gave myself a heart attack thinking it was this weekend. You have a week. May 10th, Mother's Day is coming up. If you are looking for Mother's Day gift ideas, we don't have any recommendations for you because our moms are crazy. But um, you can write a nice letter. They can't get upset with a letter. Can they? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel at this point I have to say I love you, mom. And we're just kidding. I love you, mom, too. Mine's half a world away. We are in trouble. <laughs>